Would you rather be a YouTuber with stethoscope hands or a doctor with GoPro hands? These are the real questions, guys. I remember I just hit 300 subscribers and I was so excited. Every one subscriber I got, I was so excited about. And I hit 300, I posted on Instagram being like, I'm so happy, I've got 300 subscribers. And then that day, after I posted it, I lost seven subscribers. So I was on 293 and it took me weeks maybe a week to get back to 300 subscribers. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Kieran. I'm a junior doctor and a comedian working in Manchester. For those of you new to the channel, I recently hit 10K subscribers. And so today we're doing a 10,000 subscribers Q&A. Big thanks to everyone that watches the videos, that leaves comments, that is subscribed. If you are not, which is a lot of you that watch and don't subscribe, which is fine, but please do consider subscribing. I asked you guys what you wanna know about me. We've got loads of questions split up into categories. We have got doctor, YouTube, med school, miscellaneous, personal questions, absolutely everything. Timestamps are in the description. Let's get into it. Why did you start your channel? I originally started my channel around this time last year and I'd just come back from traveling for several months and I had so much footage from being away and I wanted to make travel videos. So I made the travel videos and then I thought, well, I've made them, I should put them somewhere. And I decided to put them on YouTube. So initially it was actually going to be a travel page. And then I realized I was no longer traveling and there's no legs in continually doing traveling videos when you're stuck at home. So because of that, I actually then decided it would be better to make videos about medicine because, because I know that it's my bread and butter. And then it's now slowly over the past couple of months that I've started making videos about different things and I wanna incorporate the travel back into it. Yeah, so initially it was a travel page, slowly changed into a medical page, slowly is now becoming a general YouTubing page. So I don't really know where it's going, but I just know that I'm enjoying making videos. What fears did you have about creating your YouTube channel? This is one of the main things that stops people making a YouTube channel is what are other people gonna think about me? Luckily for me, because I'd done stand-up comedy for so many years, I'd got over that fear of what people think about me and I just didn't care. So I wasn't afraid of anything really when I started putting videos out. The only one thing I would say is on the professionalism side of things, being a doctor, just bearing in mind, I need to be careful about things I say and do if it could be looked at wrong from the doctor side of things. In terms of the embarrassing myself and doing things, I honestly couldn't care. How did you motivate yourself when you had low views? I hear this again and again, that YouTube is a marathon not a sprint. And it's a really important phrase that if you are a YouTuber that you should listen to, which is that it doesn't matter about the views and the numbers. It's easy to get obsessed with them. And I was obsessed with them, still am a little bit, but concentrate on making good stuff. And over a long period of time, the algorithm will start to favor you. The video that took off for me and went viral was not a new video. It was a video for three or four months ago. That for me has helped because it makes me think videos that I'm producing now that maybe aren't hitting as hard as I want them to, that I think they deserve to, because I've put so much time into them, they've still got that opportunity later on. So focus on what you're doing rather than the outcome and then eventually things will start catching up. Where would you like your YouTube career to go in the future? I'd like to be in a position where I'm doing a couple of days as a doctor, I'm doing a couple of days as a YouTuber, and I'm able to travel with it and do experiences with it too. I think over the next year or two, that's where I want to go with it. I want to move into the traveling and doing things space, because I enjoy watching videos where people go out and do things. So that's what I start want to start getting into. How long did it take to complete 1,000 subscribers and 4,000 watch hours? So for those of you that don't know, to monetize on YouTube, you need to hit 1,000 subscribers and 4,000 watch hours, which sounds like a lot, but once you've hit that, it's very easy, it's a snowball effect, and it just keeps going. It took me, around seven months to hit that. But then the next thousand subscribers after that took only a month. So it's exponential growth, 
don't worry too much about it. It feels like a milestone that you have to hit. But even when you do hit that, the money you're making is, is still pennies. So don't concentrate on that, concentrate on making the good content. What's your workflow process and editing tricks you'd recommend? Slash, how long does it take to script, film and edit a vid? I use Notion and I put all of my workflow process on Notion. I've got different columns starting with ideas. I'm constantly thinking of writing ideas down on my phone that appear on my Notion page. And eventually when I want to film a video, they'll move from scripted to filmed, they'll move from filmed to edited or with editor, and then they'll go to scheduled and then they'll go to published. So that's what I work through. And once I've come up with an idea, I'll just move it from place to place as I do it until it's finished. For example, after this video, I'm gonna move the 10,000 subs Q&A from scripted to filmed. How long does it take? I would say scripting takes half an hour to an hour, filming takes half an hour, uh, and editing the video takes the most amount of time, probably me around five hours, because I'm quite meticulous with what I'm doing, and the thumbnail probably takes an hour as well. How much money do you earn from YouTube? Do you feel like it's worth the time spent versus doctor rates? No is the truth. I'm not earning very much from it at the moment, but I am starting to get some brand deals and sponsorships, which do help. And this is the first month that I've actually earned proper money from it. Before that, it's been the investment that I've put into cameras and lighting and editing and all of that sort of stuff. Ali Abdal or Karma Medic. I love them both, but it has to be NASA. NASA is my guy. Who's my favorite YouTuber? My favorite YouTube channel is Yes Theory. I love the way that they tell stories and that's something that I aspire to do in my videos. And something I want to go towards is that storytelling and adventure side of things. If you had to choose between YouTube and stand up, which one would you choose and why? They're very different things. There's a huge buzz you get after you've done a stand-up comedy show, and I absolutely love that. You, you can't get that anywhere else, but it's very antisocial. It's weekends, it's evenings, it's the night times that you want to be off, but actually you're having to perform. YouTube, on the other hand, you don't get that same buzz because you're not in front of a crowd. I'm literally talking to a camera, and it can get quite lonely but at the same time I can do it when I want to. It fits around my schedule. If I want to upload two videos a week, I can. If I want to upload three, I can. If I want to upload none, I can as well. And I'm trying to build something with YouTube. So I love them both. I'm gonna try and build the YouTube and then maybe uh, do some more comedy later this year. <laughs> How many subs would it take for you to leave medicine? Now this is a good question. I don't know, to be honest. I think it would seem a waste to have done this and not to use it at all. I kind of would like to do it at least part time, but um, a million subs does sound good. Advice for anyone starting out as a small YouTuber. Number one, be consistent. Everyone says it, but do it. Number two, collaborate with people in your field. It gets you in front of an audience that you know may be interested in the same sorts of things. Collaborating with people is the main way that I've grown on YouTube. And number three is just keep practicing to improve your things. So improve your lighting, improve your videos, improve your editing every time, trying to make things better. Have you ever pulled an all-nighter to get a YouTube video finished? Actually, no, I don't. I get quite stressed about making sure my upload times are gonna be there. So I am always prepared at least a day or two in advance. Never done an all-nighter yet. Questions about being a doctor. Are you a pen returner or a pen thief? I am absolutely a pen thief every single day of the week. My bag currently probably has around 15 pens in it, none of which are mine. Sorry. How do you stop doctors from stealing pens from students on placements? The second question about pens, what is it with you guys and pens? Um, I'd say it's just like a matter of life. It's like saying, how do you stop gravity? If you drop a pen, it, it's always gonna fall and you just can't stop these things, unfortunately. If you had to choose a different job to being a doctor, what would you choose? Other than YouTuber, or comedian. I always said that I wanted to be prime minister. So I kind of think it would be a really difficult job to do. You're always gonna be in the limelight and you're always gonna be criticized. But I think, I think I'd be a good prime minister. And who knows, we had two YouTubers running for mayor of London recently. So please my friends, vote Nico for mayor of London on May 6th 
or your breath stinks. All right. Maybe at some point in my YouTube career, I will run for prime minister. I, I am aware that's not how it works. What speciality in the UK is hot soup? <laughs> what? I included this question because I found the phrase hot soup really funny. Presumably you mean hot soup as like a positive thing. <laughs> I think it depends what you think hot soup is. Because if it's the specialty that's earning the most, then look at the surgeries, plastic surgery, orthopedic surgery. If it's the one that, you know, may have offer the best lifestyle, then it may be something like dermatology, ophthalmology, GP. So it depends how hot the soup is and what kind of soup you like. What's the hardest part of medicine? It's definitely doing the on calls. It's doing all the weekends, doing all the night shifts, not being able to plan your life in advance because you're stuck to this on call rotor. So I can't wait to not be doing that anymore. Do you have as much work life balance as you'd want? No, I don't, and that's the truth. As I said before, when you're on this on-call rotor, you don't get a choice of these shifts that you have to do. And that, for me, who likes to plan in advance, likes to book gigs in, likes to book when they're going to their friend's wedding, likes to book holidays, if you can't do that, then it really affects your life. And I think that's one of the main problems with being a doctor, is that rigid, strict rotor. But there's no other alternative really, because you need people to work at night. You need people to work at the weekend. So I don't propose a better option, but I'm just saying I don't particularly like it. Kind of on the same line, we're now talking about med school. How was uni for you? I absolutely loved medical school. One of the best five years of my life. Met friends for life, had an absolute rave all of the time. It was nowhere near as hard as people made it out to be. I, I don't know whether our exams at med school were particularly easy or what the situation was, but you had to work at the right times, but I absolutely loved medical school. I also did so many other things. I was doing tennis all the time. I was playing badminton. I was doing loads of comedy. I was gymming all of the time. I was in way better shape than I am now. What's the craziest thing that you got up to in your uni days? Craziest thing I got up to. There's a couple of things that I would love to tell you, but because of the prefix of my name, I'm not sure I can tell you on the camera. To be honest, I, I just absolutely loved dressing up and going to raves. That was just the best thing and something you can't really do anymore as a working professional because you actually have to be in in the week. What age were you when you knew you wanted to go into medicine? The truth is I never really knew. And for those of you that have followed the channel for a while, I've said this a few times, I didn't know when I was at school. I wasn't even sure when I was at med school whether I wanted to be a doctor, but then after I finished, I was definitely glad I did it and there's nothing else I would have rather done. Now we're moving on to some personal questions. How did you feel growing up as a British Asian? Growing up as a British Asian is a bit of a weird one because although I'm Indian, you don't feel Indian because I wasn't born there and I can hardly speak the language. And you're also not white British, so you're some weird mix in between. And I think we're our own sort of people now, British Asians are. And it's quite cool because we've got such a rich history and culture, the food, the religion, the family, and you don't necessarily get that in all Western cultures. And so I love that that's a massive part of my life still. But at the same time, there is discrimination, both personally and institutionally, that I have faced personally and that most British Asians will have faced in their life. What is your favorite cuisine? My favorite cuisine has to be Indian. I always used to say it was Thai. I do love Thai food. And then when I spent a month in Thailand last year, I was really missing and craving Indian food. So I think it has to be Indian food number one, Thai food number two, and Asian food generally after that. Your top five places to eat. I'm, this is a Q and A, it's not TripAdvisor. What's your favorite Bollywood movie? My mum absolutely loves Bollywood movies and makes me watch all of them. There was one that I really enjoyed a few years ago called PK with Amir Khan in. And I think that one was quite cool because it had an interesting spin on religion and what we believe about religion. So if you've not seen that one, make sure you check it out. In a world where money was no object, would you choose to work? I'd say probably yes. I'm not sure what I would do necessarily, but if you didn't work, what would you do with your life? I do love adventuring and traveling and all of that sort of thing, but it gets tiring. And if you could indefinitely 
do that and do that and do that, you also need some sort of purpose to your life and you need to be able to give something back and help other people too. Are you happy? That's the most deep and personal question that I've ever heard. I let my eyes do the talking. I don't know what answer they gave, I can't really understand them. Finally, we're hitting up some miscellaneous questions to finish off this Q&A. Would you rather be a YouTuber with stethoscope hands or a doctor with GoPro hands? These are the real questions, guys. The questions that I was waiting for people to ask. I think being a doctor with GoPro hands would be extremely grim because those hands have to go in some pretty dodgy places and I'm not sure anyone wants to see that footage. A YouTuber with stethoscope hands is such a cool USP and I can think of so many cool videos you can do public reacts to stethoscope hands man. What, what an amazing video that would be. Do you think you live for the present or the future? Ooh, that's also an interesting question. I think I'm quite a prospective person. Is, pro is that the word? I look forward to the future. So I think I look to the future a lot rather than the present. I'm trying to be more in the present. So if anyone wants to try and help me, please do. But I'm quite a, I can't even think of the word because I've been Q&Aing for so long. <laughs> How has fame changed your life? Well, every time I go outside, there's paps. I just keep getting recognized everywhere. <laughs> if it happens, guys, uh, I'll let you know. What is your opinion on life after death? In Hinduism, which is a way of life rather than a religion, there's this interesting concept of the Atma. The Atma is like the soul and that the body is just a vessel that carries the soul. And that when you die, when you're cremated, your soul still lives and it's passed on to something else, a new being, and you're reincarnated. So the truth is, I don't know what's gonna happen after you know we pass away, but I think that the soul is eternal. Would you quit medicine for a lucrative business? <coughs> Ali Abdal. It's, uh, <laughs> I don't know, I'm not sure. I think it would be a waste to have done it for so long and not to be able to use it because you can make such a difference for people, not necessarily for the money, also for the academic interest, for the making difference to people. So I kind of like to do both, but let's see where, where life leads. I hope you enjoyed this Q&A guys. I tried to make it kind of quick to get through the questions and not to sort of linger too much. If there's anything that you think I didn't get to that you want me to answer, drop it in the comments and we'll go from there. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video.